Hello and welcome in my next tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can make this animated bubble material in Cinema 4D Octane. So let's get started. Let's go to Create, Extension C4D Octane Octane Material. Let's apply it to our object. Let's double click at the material, go to Node Editor. And in Node Editor, we want to click at this material. Go to Basic, change the material type to Universal and BRDF model to GGX Energy Preserving. And for now, we will make it metallic so we can see our reflections a bit better. Later, we will change it to specular material. So let's add composite texture to film with. And we already have some nice rainbow colors going on. Also, I will change the roughness here so we can see it even better. Let's add three layers. Let's start from the first one on the bottom. Let's connect Octane Gradient to it. Actually, let's sell now this Octane Gradient. And let's click at the linear. Now, if we change this slider here in Gradient, we can see we have Gradient from, from left to right. So we need to change Rotation Z to 90 degree. And now it should be fine. Now let's change the order of these two sliders. So the white is first, and then we have black at the end. Let's disconnect those two layers for now. And as you can see, we have this nice rainbow going on, which we can use to add nice animation to our bubble material. But right now it's a bit empty. So let's add a bit more to it. What we want to add here is definitely the second layer. Let's connect it back and let's add custom pattern. And again, if you don't see the custom pattern, just close the node editor and open it again. And if you still didn't don't see it, it's probably because you have not the latest version of the of the octane. And so let's go to the custom pattern and add procedural effects connected to texture layer two. And let's sell uh, node it for now. And what we're looking here for is particles, which will generate those nice well particles around our sphere. And what's cool about it, we can also animate the time to get a bit more nice organic look to it. And let's and let's disable the cell node here. What we need to do is go to the layer two, which which we just connected the particles to, and change the blend mode to soft light. And as we can see, we now have really nice blend between our gradient here on a layer one and those particles. And then again, we can animate this to get really nice. Uh, organic look. Also, what I will add here is color correction between the layer one and the gradient. So we can do something like this and just animate the gain here later on to get nice animation. Let's leave it at 1.5 for now so we can see it quite good. And let's move to the layer three. Let's connect it back. Let's Duplicate it by holding Ctrl and drag it to the top. Let's connect it to the texture of the layer 3 and change the type to Paint Colors. And we already have really nice result. Let's still note this. And we definitely need to add Transform to it because it's a bit too huge scale right now. Something like this. And let's disable the cell node. And let's change the Blend Mode of the layer 3 to either soft light or overlay. We can test both. I think the overlay actually works a bit better in this one. And I'll move it to the side slightly and add gradient between, in which I will adjust the black and white values of this paint colors to look at really nice result. Something like this. And let's see, I think it's already in the place where I want it to be. And let's now Go back to our material and let's lower the roughness to maybe 0 0.04, which is really small value because we don't want to make it perfectly glossy. And let's get rid of the metallic. Let's go to albedo and change it to black. Let's go to EOR. It's 1.3, which is fine. We also can change the film you are here to a different value, like one or something, maybe 1.3. It doesn't really matter. It's just whatever colors looks best to you. In this case, what actually matters is going to transmission and changing the transmission type to thin wall and changing it to fully white. This way we get this nice bubble look. You can also enable the fake shadows if you want to. Let's actually enable it so it's a bit faster. And let's add fall off to albedo, which I will show you in a second why. Let's actually store a buffer here and let's add fall off to it. And as we can see, now we have nice outline of it, but it's a bit too much. Let's just put it all the way up and it's still too much. 
So let's just lower the maximum value to a bit lower value, like so. And as you can see, now we have really nice outline of this bubble. So it looks a bit more visible in our render. And if it's still too much, we can still lower it to 0.05 even, just so we have really thin outline around. Okay, next step. For the next step, I actually will get a closer view of it. And it might be not visible in a YouTube video, but connect this composite texture to bump. It will be a bit uh, too much right now. Let me actually select one area, like maybe this place here. And let's add acting gradient here. And let's just lower the and let's just lower the value of the white color here to like 50%. And I think it will looks just fine. I'll just try to get a better area here. Like maybe let's see, I think it's quite visible here. So if I compare it and disable the bump, you can see it just makes things a bit more oily, as you can see, which looks way better in animation and less fake, of course, at the same time. So definitely this is really important detail. And now let's add some animation to it. So I will go back to the metallic thing so we can see how it looks. So fully metallic, fully white, and a lot of roughness, just so we can see this film width here way better than just on a specular thin wall material in which it also needs a bit of time to not have noise and be visible. And what you want to do is go to the color correction we set up here in the first layer, change the gain to like five, make sure you are on a first frame, Click at this dot next to the game, go to the last frame and change it to, let's see, like 0 0.5 and click it again. And also we can go right click at the game, animation, show F curve and make sure it's linear. And now, as you can see, we have this nice animation where it's slowly going to the bottom. And also we can make it a bit more uh, nice if we of course animate those two things here so go to the first frame click at this dot next to the time and let's go to the last frame and let's add like minus one or two it doesn't really matter it's just about speed so you can add minus one minus two or even maybe three it doesn't really matter just you will see which speed is fine for you I will click at this dot again to make sure it's keyframed. I will again go right click at the time animation, show F curve and just make it linear. And we have now those particles animated. So they're moving slowly as well. And we can also do the same thing with this paint colors. So, so let's go to the paint colors, go to the first frame. Let's type like zero maybe in time. Let's click at this dot next to the time. Let's go to last frame. And in this case, it's a bit more subtle. So I will add like 20. So it's actually visible. Click at this dot again, click right at the time, go to animation, show F curve and linear. And if we solo note this as well, we can see now we have nice animation of this, which is quite su subtle. We can actually probably make it even more. Let's see, maybe 40. Let's click at this again. Let's see if it's better. I think it might be good enough. Let's disable the cell node and let's see it all in the context now. So I will go actually to this camera so we can see a bit better what's going on. You can see it's slowly going down and also changing the shape of those waves as well as those particles we have here. You can see those dots here. They are moving as well. So it's really cool. And let's go back to, of course, our material and make sure we revert everything to correct look. So let's connect the fall of map to the albedo, change the metallic to zero, roughness to 0 0.04. And now we can see the same thing here. It's a bit less visible because we have, of course, different material now. The bump is really nice here. As we can see those small reflections, which adds a bit of nice detail to the whole look of it. Also the bump, it's more visible as well in the place where we don't really see the rainbow because it's uh, too dark. So we can see a bit of those smudges here from the bump, which is really cool detail. And yeah, I think that's it for this tutorial. Hope you find it entertaining and you learned something new today. If you like this type of content, be sure to subscribe. My goal on this channel is to upload one tutorial every week. And you can also find me on Instagram. And I think that's it. See ya.